That's just a stupid boulder. It's not just a boulder. It's a rock. A rock. A rock. So it is day two of the latest box, Arts of Atlantis, and after spending like nine plus hours yesterday trying to get a working decklist from amongst the pile of garbage that is Chronomaly, which by the way if you want to see the results of that effort, I'll leave a little link up there. I decided today I would take it a bit easier and take an already existing competitive archetype and simply make it better, with the new support. This plan went quite a lot better than I expected. Who would have thought that a bunch of magnets would synergize so well with a bunch of snakes? So of course the art type I chose to take a look at first was Magnet Warriors, which I'm going to be completely honest here when I say this, is one of the most fun archetypes you can ever play in Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't believe me? Let me ask you a question. Every single deck that has ever become top tier or competitively viable will generally have a group of people that just hate it, whether that be because they find it frustrating to play against, find it boring to play, or just think it's way too overpowered. Have you ever actually heard anyone complain about magnets? Anyone at all? I know I certainly haven't, and this is coming from someone who has to browse through hundreds of comments each video. That's because literally everybody likes magnets. This archetype is hella fun, and it's generally not that toxic to play against either, as it's one of the few archetypes that doesn't really come with any inbuilt disruption. Well, that was until now. You see, magnets are in fact rocks. And not only that, but the majority of these rocks just happen to be level 3. And we've just been given a certain snake lady who just happens to require those specific conditions to be summoned. Welcome to Updated Magnet Warrior. Now just before I get into the list, just a friendly reminder that if you are enjoying any of the content you're watching or find any of it useful, to please leave a like on the video down below and consider subscribing to the channel whilst you're down there. I'm getting pretty close to 50k now so I'd appreciate all the subs I can get. It's completely free and you can unsub at any time. Alright, so in general there isn't a whole lot to say about this actual list, as obviously it's almost identical to your standard Magnet Warriors most of you have been familiar with for months now, but there are a couple of new additions I've made to the list. First of all, obviously we have the new inclusion of Gorgonic Guardian. Now I've already made an entire video dedicated to how strong this card is, and I'll leave a little link up there for those interested in that, but basically to sum this up, this card is a quick effect negate, attack reduction, and removal all in one card. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card and target one face-up monster your opponent controls, its attack becomes zero, and if it does, its effects are negated. Once per turn you can target one monster on the field with zero attack and destroy it. So the first effect of this card is obviously a quick effect that can be used during either player's turn, but what's even cooler about this particular effect is that it can be used during the damage step. So if it battles a card like Bowser, it can wait till the damage step to use its attack reduction and Bowser just won't be able to respond to it. This card is also insanely easy to summon in this particular deck, thanks to a whole bunch of cards that allow you to easily get two level 3 rocks on board. Gamma on summon allows you to summon another magnet from hand, Magnetic Field if you control a magnet can simply special summon another from grave, and Super Team Buddy Force Unite can special summon extra monsters from your hand or graveyard. Now Super Team is actually the other significant change I've made to Magnets, as normally the more standard card they're known to run is Powerful Rebirth. But I actually don't like this card as much anymore, because when this card brings back a monster, it increases its level by 1. Which is pretty good if we're going for rank 4s. But I'm not trying to summon rank 4s anymore. I want to summon Guardian. So I swapped it out for Super Team, which has a pretty similar effect, but it keeps the levels the same. Last thing I want to mention about this deck list is the skill. In the gameplay we notice I'm using Little Yugi with the skill Draw Sense High Level. Not that you could have figured that out, because I didn't actually activate the skill once, as I simply never needed to, or even was able to. So in hindsight, after I've already gathered the replays, I changed the skill to Destiny Draw, as you'll definitely get more use out of it than that one. But feel free to experiment with other skills too, as magnets don't really need a skill to function anyway, so play whatever you like. Alright guys, that's going to be it for the decklist portion of the video, the rest of the video will be gameplay with commentary showcasing the combos in action. Remember if you are enjoying the video or find any of the content useful, to please leave a like on the video down below and subscribe to the channel whilst you're down there. Enjoy the gameplay! Alright, let's get into it. So as you'll see, the decklist went 9 wins and 1 loss, just like yesterday, only this time, all 9 wins were in a row. Ending on something like a 15 game win streak or something, if you include the 
six wins I had on the other deck list earlier. So I thought that was pretty goddamn nuts. Unfortunately though, the replays today aren't going to be super high quality as when you're playing a gate card, a lot of people just kind of concede as soon as their card gets negated, which is kind of kind of a shame. And the other annoying thing is, Blue Eyes is for some reason extremely popular in Platinum. So a lot of these replays are just against Blue Eyes. I'm pretty sure all the good ones just happen to be against Blue Eyes. Alright, let's at least get into the game, so. Alright, so like I said, first replay, it's a Blue Eyes player. So I'm pretty sure this is the one where uh, I drew Obelisk, which, okay, ignore the Obelisk, I swapped it out literally the game after this, so. Alright, so first of all, we're going to summon our guy, this will just search for our Berserkion, and we've got our two super teams set. Cards of Continent, going to draw a couple of cards, going to summon a Blue Eyes this way, going to banish one of our super teams, which is kind of a shame. There's also another reason I um like powerful don't like powerful rebirth as much as Super Team, because if I had another magnet in hand there, I could have activated Super Team and summoned the magnet just then. Whereas powerful rebirth can't because it only uses cards in grave. With this card, uses hand as well. He swings in. We're gonna swap it our magnet for Delta. This will then send uh, Beta to the grave. Generally, you're gonna be sending Beta most of the time with this card's effect if you don't already have a Beta. Super Team will bring back the beta, which then search for our final remaining piece to summon Berserkion. You tribute itself, summon another Delta, which is more fodder for Berserkion. Obviously during the end phase he summons out his blue eyes. Really disgusting ghost ray looking blue eyes. But it's still a blue eyes I guess even summons out another blue eyes. Now we were kind of lucky this duel because his back crow was, well at least at the moment it was inactive, so we could summon Gamma, special summon another level 3 from hand, and go into Alucard. Alucard can dis detach, destroy a card, destroy a Silver's Cry, we then summon our boss monster, now there's one back crow less, and Berserkion can start popping some stuff. Leaving him on a fat 100 life points. It's a little bit scary though, because he then top decked, or at least I think he top decked, Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon, which is kind of scary for us. So we lose our boss monster, it's a bit harder to kill what he's got left. Alright, so we draw another level 4 thankfully, we use Alucard's effect again to try to hit the Providence, which is now active, he negates the Alucard, which leaves us a free space to summon our boy, and go into a rank 4. And of course, we're running Malevolent Sim, so we just banish the alternative and beat him to death. Pretty decent first game. And this wasn't the game I drew Obelisk, it must be the next one. One of these games there was Obelisk in, the, uh, in my starting hand, which you can completely ignore, because, like I said, I swapped it out the very next game as it wasn't quite what I wanted to run. Yeah, I swapped it out for just another Berserkion. Alright. So yet again, another Blue Eyes player, and there's the Obelisk. Actually a really shit starting hand too. This was awful. Thankfully our opponent's starting hand seems to be just as bad. Not sure what I'd expect from a Platinum player to be honest, but yeah. Platinum level deck building is certainly something. Alright, thankfully we drew the best card in our deck, the beta. He summons out another blue eyes, uses alternative, tries to pop our magnet. In response, we're gonna swap it out. Summon Delta, send a final piece to the grave. Now we had the option there to um, activate Super Team during his turn, but it just would have meant he would have swung his two attacks of Twin Burst into our two monsters, so I decided to wait till this turn to do it. Search Berserkion, of course, but they're going to activate Super Team. 
bring back the level 3, which then special summon the level 4 from hand, to send another level four, 3 to the graveyard. Now the reason we did this specifically is because we wanted to make sure we could still summon Berserker at the end of this turn, and because we're going to have one material attached under the rank 3 we make, we needed to have still have the remaining pieces in the grave um, for summoning the monster. If that makes sense. So Gore Guardian's going to detach to reduce this to zero and negate its effects, and it detached the uh, Gamma, and since we still have the Alpha underneath, we need to send another Alpha with this, so we'd still have the uh, Beta, Alpha, and Gamma in grey for Berserkion. So some Berserkion, destroy his card, and he's dead from here. And the cool thing is, and this is what I've noticed most about Gorgonic Guardian, is the fact that even if you, like, get wiped this turn, or like, the next turn, you don't actually finish him this turn, and he goes into his turn, you can't get wiped or anything because you still have a Gorgonic Guardian up, just to negate his stuff. Gorgonic Guardian doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, win condition on its own, or something you have to summon early. Even just later in the game, this card is just super useful. It's very impactful at just closing out games and making sure your opponent can't do anything. But you'll also notice that a couple of replays in here, especially, I'm pretty sure the next one actually, is just you can summon it on turn 1, and your opponent will just not be able to do anything from there. Alright, 12 game win streak right now. With this deck list, I actually uh, got to my highest win streak ever, I think, or 15, which is pretty cool. At least in rank kills. I think I have a 30 plus game win streak in casual. Alright, summoning the Magnet Warrior, sending level 3. Then we're going to get the Magnetic Field on board. This will then special summon out Beta. Beta will then search a card. We now have all three pieces for our Berserkion. And not to mention, we have two level 3s on board. So. We can make a Gorgonic Guardian, and pass the turn. Now keep in mind, Gorgonic Guardian is actually a rock, so it synergizes with this field spell in that when my opponent swings into it, even if somehow they get through the Gorgonic Guardian effect, this field spell will still return a card to hand after they um, battle it. So he summons Cannahawk, we just negate the Cannahawk, and from there, he just concedes. I mostly just wanted to show these kind of replays just to show how easy it is to set up Gorgonic Guardian turn 1, and show that it's still really good to set up turn 1, you don't have to sit on just your magnets for their swapping effects. Especially if you can already get like all three pieces in starting hand already. Alright, next replay. I reckon unfortunately this was yet again another Blue Eyes player. I don't know, Blue Eyes players need to get out of Platinum already, you guys are all hard stuck. Alright, 13. And this was the Legend Rank Cup game, I believe. Alright, so once, once again, gonna send our beta. Can I take a field spell? Bring back the beta. Let's give us a search. And we're gonna set the super team and pass the turn. We got some pretty standard stuff, just searches a card. I don't think he summoned a blue eyes this turn. Yeah, and then during the end phase, we're going to swap out our monster. This will then send Gamma to the grave. Super team can bring back Beta, search a card. Once again, just like in the um, other jewel that I was talking about earlier, we're making sure that we have uh, multiple copies of this dude, so that when we make a rank 3, even if we still have one of them stuck underneath the card, we can still summon Berserkion. And so first things first, we're going to summon Diamond Direwolf. Activate his, his effect, pop in himself to pop one of the back row. Always been Providence in response, negating it. Magnetic Field, going to the level 3. Special summoning the other level 3 from hand. Get our Allo card. Which is obviously going to rug if you break, but even if he didn't and there was still a piece underneath, we could still summon Berserkion, because we had another Gamma in hand. And he was dead. Alright. 
Now, final replay, and fair warning, this one was as boring, boring as the Ritual Beast gameplay was. Again, it's just another setup turn where it just shows you can summon God Guardian on turn one, and your opponent just kind of doesn't really have a whole lot they can do against it. If they don't have Book of Moons, their game's just done. And this was the 15 game win streak. This was my highest win streak ever. So, Magnet Warrior, gonna send Gamma. Field Spill, gonna bring back the Gamma. You can then Spell Summon the Beta from hand. Searching the. This all three pieces once again. Gorgonic Guardian, and we're gonna set the Super Team. Which I'm pretty sure can be used on the Gorgonic Guardian to summon the Alpha, even if we didn't have Delta on board. Which is pretty cool, another bit of synergy between um, these two cards and Magnets. The Cosmic Sit, sadly, but of course, this is why I said um, Powerful Re I, like I was talking about earlier, where I like this card over Powerful Rebirth. I can activate this in response, even without a card in Grave, and still summon a monster from hand. He tries to summon Core, of course. We're not gonna let him do that. A lot of the time you would let like little searches like this go through, but in particular Cyber Dragon, they're a very, very bricky deck. And they particularly run on a one-off card they have to search for that reduces their life points. So if you negate this card, it's a bit of a risk because they could still have the perfect hand and then combo off and you've got no disruption anymore. But against particularly Cyber Dragon, there's a good chance you negate their card their game's just done. And yeah, he goes straight to end phase, he was done. This game was over. And we just do a little bit of BMing. So we summon Malevolent Sin. We start to banish our stuff, and he concedes. Alright, so that's it for the replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below, and yeah, subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Hope you see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.